Hello Flosstube, this is Kate Madam Ice and welcome back to my Flosstube channel. I have so much to talk about today, mostly because Stitch Mania is coming up and I really want to share my plans with you guys. So without further ado, I'm going to get going or else I fear I may never end this video. <laughs> so uh, the first thing that I wanted to talk about though before I get into Stitch Mania, there's a couple things. First thing. Uh, I want to say welcome to all my new subscribers. I've gotten a whole bunch of new ones since my last video and I'm not really sure why that is but I'm super happy to have you and super happy that you decided to come visit me today. Um, and of course everyone who's been watching for a while, thank you for coming back. Uh, I have a couple floss tubers that I want to talk about here. Um, the first one... I want to talk about is Miss Linda over at Blue Horse Yellow Cow. Pretty sure I said that right, but I will admit I get the colors and the animals confused sometimes. So I'm pretty sure it's Blue Horse Yellow Cow. Uh, if you guys haven't ever watched Linda, she's wonderful and creative and I love listening to her. I am hearing what she's up to and uh, she has her daughter Sarah sometimes come on. Pretty sure her daughter's name is Sarah. And uh, they are just super fun to watch and super creative people and I wish that I lived near you because I would love to come visit you all the time. The next person I want to talk about who I really enjoyed watching this week, um, Wendy at hoodlums times four it's hoodlums x4 that's her floss tube name and she has an amazing amount of creativity not only in cross stitching but she makes journals that are just amazing and i love listening to her talk about her journaling and how she does it and what she likes it, it's just so interesting i wish that I could make myself stick with something like that but I know myself and there's no way that I would be able to stick with everyday journaling random things that happen in my day like she can and it's amazing and uh, if you are interested in paper crafts at all I would invite you to go watch her because it's super interesting uh, okay, next floss tubers. I've got three more channels that I want to talk about here, and it's because I have recently gotten to meet all of these channels in person. We just started an SC Stitchers Facebook page. I'll try to put a link below to it. Um, and from that Facebook page, we've kind of discovered how many Stitchers are in our area here, and uh, the Panera meetup that I go to once a month has grown and is now including some floss tubers. One of them is Nicole at Nicole's Needlework. Last time I got to have a really nice conversation with her and I really, really enjoyed meeting her. And she's just as sweet in person as she comes off in her videos and I really enjoyed my conversation. Uh, then. I also met last time uh, Memory and Amy. They're from Barefoot Needle Art. Oh, what's their floss tube name? The Current Situation. The Current Situation. Yes, that's their floss tube name. Amy designs under Barefoot Needle Art. And Memory is the stitcher. <laughs> so Memory... They both cross stitch, but Memory does all the models for Amy's designs because Amy does the designing. Anyways, they're both super fun and you should check out their floss tube channel too. Then the last person that I met, he's not a floss tuber. I don't think he has any videos. Um, his name is Oscar and he comments on a lot of videos, I think. So uh, it was super nice to meet him too. And he added, you know, the testosterone to our stitching gathering so that's always good to <laughs> mix it up a little bit um and that is all i have for floss tubers 
All right, I feel like I'm rushing through a little bit and I kind of am because I'm truly terrified of how long it's gonna take me to talk about Stitch Mania. So without any further ado, Stitch Mania. First of all, if you don't know what Stitch Mania is, I should probably start there. If you don't know what Stitch Mania is, it's a Facebook group called Stitch Mania. It's spelled M-A-Y-N-I-A. And it started a few years ago, I think 2015. And uh, some people got together, decided that it would be super fun that in the month of May, for the first 15 days of May, you started a new project every single day. And it's kind of evolved. People can, you can kind of do what you want, whatever's crazy to you in the month of May. So, but it's a time to go a little bit insane. So, some people do monogamous monogamous mania which means that they work on one project the entire month some people 15 is way too many starts so they just start a new one a week in the month of may some people still start a new project every single day and it grows by the year so some people are doing 19 new starts since it's 2019 this year then there's people like uh julie colorado girl no wrong Kansas City girl in a Colorado world. She did 50 new starts last year. So she went the month of May and then some of April and some of June. 50 new starts people. I don't have that kind of fortitude. But then um, the blimey cat method, which I'm kind of building off of. So that is, uh, it was created by Brittany at Ingleside Imagin Imaginarium. I'll link her below. She's super sweet. You should also watch her if you don't already. Um, but what she does is she keeps track of the starts that she does. So the first year of Stitch Mania, she started 15 new things. And then the next year, she kept track of which day she started what things. And if she had not finished it, the, then she carried it on to that year. So... If, for example, she started a project on the 1st of May and she did not finish it throughout that entire year, then the next Stitch Mania on May 1st, she works on that same project again until it's done. Then, if you finish your projects, then you get to start a new one on that day. So, I'm kind of doing that, but I'm trying to limit my number of whips because... A lot of them that you're going to see right now, I have not touched since last year's Stitch Mania. And that makes me really sad. So, I want to limit my number of whips to 15, period. Maximum number of whips, 15. And how I'm going to do that, my idea for it is to use Stitch Mania as my refresh for the year. So, I actually have created a list of rules for myself, for my whips. And I'll show you really quick um i typed it out even and printed it out so my rules always absolutely maximum of 15. then in general the idea is throughout the year if i finish two projects i'll start one so then i will slowly wheedle down my uh, number of whips through the year so that next year in stitch mania it's super exciting and i'll get to start a whole bunch of new things I've made some excep exceptions to that rule. Uh, so, there's a few things that once I finish one of that category, then I'm just going to go right into another one. So, just one for one trade. Finish one, start another. One of those is going to be uh, a self-design of my own. I'm going to finish one and start another because I think it's important for me to keep stitching my own things because I think that's also really fun as well as stitching up everyone else's beautiful designs. I, If I'm doing a shop model for my friend Susan, who's opening Fire Poppies, which by the way, she just got word that uh, she's moving forward with a location that is really close to where I live, like a few minutes away, and I am stoked to have a cross stitch shop that close by, so pumped. I'll put a link to her website below. Uh, she has the online shop open. She just doesn't have a brick and mortar yet. It should be opening if all goes well. It sounds like the end of June, early July, maybe. Um, she'll be opening Fire Poppy's brick and mortar version 
so excited. Anyways, if I'm doing a shop model for her, I will finish a shop model and then start a new one right away just so I can keep going with that. Uh, and I have a couple other exceptions, but I don't need to go through all that with you guys. This is already taking way too long. I made a set of rules. I want to have 15 whips max. I'm going to use Stitch Mania to do that. So essentially what that means for this year is I'm doing Blimey Cat for everything that I started last year, which was my first Stitch Mania. And uh, I'll just continue working on those projects that I didn't finish. Anything that I did finish, I'm either filling with another whip that I started throughout the year not during Stitch Mania time so that it slides into one of my 15 whip spots or I'm doing a new start. So that equals hopefully I'll have two new starts and I'll tell you why hopefully once I get into it. All right. I think that's all the preface. Let's go. This is, oh, if you didn't catch it, so this is pretty much a whip parade for me because I'm about to show you everything that I'm working on because it's all being put into whip, Stitch Mania. Yay, Stitch Mania, Whip Parade, all the excitement. Here we go. So, May 1st. On May 1st, I will be working on a Mill Hill kit, Buttons and Beads, Winter Wonderland. So this... And I'm pretty sure that this is one of my Stitch 9s. And I should know whether or not it is because that's ridiculous. But I don't. I don't remember if it's this one or my other Mill Hill kit. That's pretty similar that you'll see in a little bit. And this is how much I've gotten done on it. I haven't worked on it since last year. Stitch Media. So, here we go. Whip number one. And why don't I just show you all the project bags while I'm at it. So I've gone through a lot of iterations of project bags. So you'll see a lot of different versions of them. But this one is just a small one. It's big enough to fit just the little mill hills. If you have a pattern that's a half page, it fits in here. And it's super sweet. And there's a little button. There's a, a while there where all I did was button project bags. Which I think are super cute, but it's kind of work intensive so I've moved on to zippers May 1st oh no I didn't choose a place to put all the things that I'm done talking about all right we'll put it here for now okay May 2nd May 2nd I will be working on Christmas rules so that means I had a finish in May 2nd of last year. I think I'm going to try to show you all my finishes from last year. Actually, I know that I'm going to do that because I plan to. So here we go. Last year, May 2nd, I started No Face, which I stitched for a friend and I gave it to her this year in January. I'll put a picture of it up here so that you can see what I'm talking about. And if you've watched my other videos, you've seen it before. So this year, I'm moving my whip. Christmas rules into May 2nd place. And here's where I am on that. Oh, this is what it will look like. Maybe. There we go. So this is Christmas rules by Lizzie Kate. I'm doing it um, in the 12 months of Christmas style that is hosted by Caitlin at a Stitch for Mom. And it's I'm loving this style and I'm loving this whip because it's just so cute and so manageable to just get one done per month. It was such a good idea, Caitlin. Um, but this is where I am. I'm working on honor traditions here right now. And since I'm working on stitching the word traditions, I just, I've been singing the song tradition from Fiddler on the Roof just continuously when I've been working on it because how can you not? And um, I think you can see there, do you see the flame is kind of glittering? So I used uh, the DMC Etoile yellow for the flame and that is, I'm super happy with it. I have used Etoile somewhere in each block. So rolls up here is stitched in Etoile. 
this snowflake, uh, these little doodads, the ornament hanger bits, the gray part is a twirl. I don't know if you can really see that. And then the flame. So similar to the red, I'm doing a pop of red in each one and I'm doing a little bit of a twirl in each one. And I'm loving it. I think it looks super good. Also, I'm trying something new with my makeup today. Um, I decided I wanted to try to be a little bit more bold. So I put color being purple on my eyes. I'm trying to decide if it looks like I have a black eye or not. So, hopefully it doesn't because I don't have black eyes. It's just me attempting to put makeup on my face, which is only a weekend thing. I only wear makeup on the weekends because when I'm at work, I, for various reasons, try not to look too feminine. So, I don't wear makeup to work. So, this is just my weekend attempt at makeup. If you guys have any hints for me or tips or if it looks terrible, please don't hesitate. Tell me so that I hear it from you before I wear it out into like the real world. Thanks. And sorry for that little divergence from Stitch Mania. This really is going to take me forever if I keep doing that. May 3rd. On to May 3rd. I have... It is Beauty and the Beast which is a Thomas Kincaid Disney Dreams collection. I just have this tiny one and I bought it right before uh, MCG went out of business. So I didn't know in like really early on in my stitching career. So I didn't realize that I should stock up on any of those kits that I wanted then because now I definitely can't afford any of them. So Anyways, this is where I am on that. I'm not super far. It's full coverage and it's my only full co coverage piece. And so I'm trying to figure out how I want to go about full coverage. And I love this needle minder. I don't remember where I got it, but I love it. I looked it up on Etsy because I think I saw someone else with it. And I was like, I need that. Oh, and the project bag is this Beauty and the Beast stained glass fabric I got from Joann's and I use this rose fabric as the lining and this one has this metal clasp which I can't clasp because I have all my threads in a box in here but I really don't like the metal clasps so I only have a couple that are like that because I don't really like it. Okay. May 4th. So this is where I say I hopefully will have two new starts. Last year I started, um, I'll just show you it. It's a whip currently, but I'm planning on getting it done by May 1st. We'll see about that. It's also in my Stitch 9 challenge. So, hmm, you're not going to be able to see it very well. I'll use a project bag as a backdrop. Okay. So this is a kit that I picked up from a friend who just brought it to the stitch in because she didn't want it. And I didn't know. I picked it up when I was brand new to stitching. So I didn't realize when I picked it up what it, what it was. So this is Ada that has a printed picture of Monet's Japanese bridge on it. And then you just stitch over some parts, some select parts. Let's see. Yes, I have it on the scroll rods because I'm working on it and I didn't want to take it off the scroll rods just to show you. So if you can see there, there's stitching up here just kind of sporadically in these flowers. And this bush is kind of stitched. And I'm working over here on this bush right now. So it's not all stitched. It's not full coverage or anything. Um... And I didn't really know what it was when I when I got it. And I gotta admit, I'm not a huge fan of the printing because 
they printed it crooked. So if you follow like this corner and you follow that row of stitches down, you end up like two or three stitches over down here. So they printed it crooked. So then the chart doesn't really work out. I had a lot of troubles at first over here because I was trying to follow the chart counting and I quickly realized that I ended up with like a shadow. <laughs> so I would stitch like say this green line right here. I would stitch it in, in accordance with the chart and it would end up over here where it's all dark. So then I would just have a, sh a printed shadow of what I had stitched beside it and it didn't look right. I hope that makes sense. So anyways, what I ended up doing is I'm using the chart as kind of a guide, but putting the stitches where it looks like they make sense on the print. And that was really tricky all the way up here and through here. I'm having a much better time in these bushes and the rest of it isn't so scattered like these. It's, it's like chunks of lily pads here. And I think I'll have an easier time. So I do think that there's a chance that even though I'm only about right here, I'm not even quite halfway done. I think that there still is a chance that I'll be able to finish it by the end of the month because these chunks I think will be much easier for me and it's more single color and less kind of confetti. These flowers up here, so many shades of purple, so many. I think it'll look good when it's done. I don't think I'll probably seek out another kit like that though. Okay. So hopefully I get that done by the end of the month and then what I will put in this slot on May 4th is going to be Eliza Bell Cox. So this is Eliza Bell Cox. It's a sampler by Hands Across the Sea and it is gorgeous and I love the verse and I absolutely adore this border especially these tiger lilies that are in it that's really what got me I was not going to order it but then those little tiger lilies are so cute in the border and I was kind of already wanting to order it and the bird is awesome my husband thinks it's creepy I think it's awesome and anyway, so here is Eliza Valcox first I made this kind of, it's kind of like a project bag. It's like a holder for the scroll rods. And I'll show you. So I just put them when I'm not working on it. I just put the scroll rods in there. And this is where I am on her. I'm not very far. <laughs> Not very far at all. I just have this top corner. I'm using the Victorian Motto kit, if you want to call it for it. So Victorian Motto dyed this linen and dyed the flosses to go with this specific chart. And I ordered all of that. And I'm very glad I did. I do really enjoy working with her flosses. So. Um, that's Elizabeth. And I just wanted to show you this too. I also made this little bag that goes along with it. And I keep, I have scroll rod, like grime guard covers that I keep in there. And um, if I'm trying to take that places, which I have done before, which is kind of crazy, I should probably just keep that one at home. But if I'm trying to transport it, I'll put the end bars to the scroll rods in this little bag and take it with me so that I have all my stuff. I can just disassemble the scroll rods really quick, stick it in these bags, carry it away, and it's really quick reassembly. I don't have to re-put the fabric on the scroll rods or anything. Okay. Next up is May 5th. Last year I started class schedule by Armada Designs. Well, I didn't start it. I put it in my mania last year. Um, and this is it. It is done. And I've showed it before recently. I finished it in this little wall hanging. I have a dowel in here. This is the fabric on the back. Little tassels. And 
So this year I will be starting this little Mill Hill ornament called Snow Fun. <laughs> it's so cute. Look at him. And his little hat and the cardinals. This is a stitch nine for me this year. Um, so I'll be starting it and finishing it this year for stitch nine. I, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah. So the reason that I'm starting this on May 5th is because I have a business trip that I'm going on. Uh, I have to be in Charlotte the 6th, 7th, and 8th, Charlotte, North Carolina. And so we'll be leaving the 5th, which is Sunday afternoon, to get up there for a class that I'm taking on the 6th, 7th, and 8th of May. So the next couple, I tried to keep that in mind when I could so that I'm taking things that are easy to transport, which this little kit is definitely easy to transport. Next up, May 6th. So last year I started Sapphire Crystal, which is another tiny Mill Hill ornament that I finished this year. I'll put a picture of it up here because I didn't go up and dig it out of my Christmas stuff. Um, and so this year to f take its place, I will be working on these Victorian Hardanger ornaments. And I haven't worked on it since the last time I showed you I finished the first one and I do really enjoy doing Hardanger and so I should do it more often so one of my self-imposed rules for my 15 whips is that I always want to have a Hardanger going so I'm gonna hopefully just try to keep a Hardanger in one of my 15 all the time super fun then on the 7th. Last year, on the 7th, I worked on Legendary Creatures South by Clouds Factory. And I've shown this recently, but I still am in love with it, so I'm just going to show it again. Here it is. With just minor amounts of glare there. Ah. <sighs> I love it. It's hanging in our bedroom right now because I still haven't found a better place to put it. And I've kind of decided that there's a spot on our bedroom wall that's just always going to be the latest framed cross stitch. Because I'll want to stare at them always. So no matter what time of the year or whatever, if I get something framed, I'm just going to put it on the bedroom wall right there. No matter what it is. Because I'll want to look at it. And this year, since that is done, I am moving the Biscornia of the Month. Uh, it's by Tiny Modernist. She is doing a Biscornia of the Month this year that is legendary creatures, kind of. I didn't plan that. I only decided to use this Biscornia of the Month because it, I was going to be traveling and it was easy to fit there. But it actually matches up pretty well. Um, this is a really terrible picture of what the first month is going to look like. And it's all crumpled because I take this in this bag. I put it in my work purse and um, so it doesn't have a fancy project bag or anything. I take it in my work purse and I very rarely ever actually get to work on it. Um, I don't really take lunch breaks at work or anything. So I, I only very rarely get to actually work on it while I'm at work. But I take it just in case. And here I am on it. I Here's the back of the first month. I do have it done. It's on opalescent um, Lugana. And I love the opalescent Lugana. The whole series is going to be on the opalescent for me. I changed the colors a little bit because I'm not an orange person. I really... I'm not a huge fan of the color orange and the green that was charted is just very, very green and I wanted to make it more blue green. So I changed the colors a little bit on it. Just a little. This is just more coral and all the greens are a little bit more blue. And this is where I am on the front. I have one dragon kind of stitched. And that's where I am. It's very slow going. 
because I only really work on it that every once in a while at, at work and um, she's come out with you know three more since this one this one was just January I'll get to them eventually I bought enough fabric for them all so just a matter of time to start working through them next up is one that is a carryover from last year so this is called garden in blue by the design connection and coming up here you're gonna see a bunch of things that I started in stitch mania last year that you might be like oh that's an interesting choice I picked a bunch of these last year and they were a lot of them given to me from other stitchers because I didn't want to spend a bunch of money buying a whole bunch of new things for myself to start and it's all things that I do really like I like this I think it's really pretty and blue is my favorite color and so I don't I'm not upset that I'm working on this at all although it does look a little bit older and that's kind of what they the rest of them are going to seem like too um but I love them anyway. So, and I didn't know it when I got it, but this has beads in it. So, um, now that I know from my Mill Hill kits that I do really enjoy beading, I'm excited to know that there's beads in it. Uh, and this is all I got done last year. Just that tiny little bit in the middle. This is before I realized that I like to always start in the top left hand corner. Uh, so I started in the top center. So I'm probably going to end up working across here so that I can be in the top left corner and then spread from there, spread down from there. Because I really only like stitching from left to right, top to bottom when I can. And, oh, the project back for this is another wintry one. Uh, it's got these pretty trees on it with the flap. And this is the inside. I was just using scraps of stuff that I had laying around when I made this one. And a little button. Wow, this is going to be a long video. I'm so sorry. May 9th, which is an important day to me. May 9th is the day that my husband and I started dating. We went on our first date on May 9th in 2009, making it 10 years this year. It's a lot of my life. <laughs> uh, but this May 9th is the day for Four Corners. And this is a continuation from last year from Little House Needleworks. This is another Stitch 9. And I've got a bag and a bag and a bag because I don't know. I just do. Uh, this is how far I am. I haven't worked on it since the last time I showed you when I showed you all my Stitch 9 pieces. That's all I got. And I have this in my ugly bag. Uh, I really still do like this fabric. I just wish that I hadn't put this on. I could probably pick this off if I wanted to and then it would be just fine. But that would take some work that I don't know that I'm willing to put into it right now. May 10th. Now this is one that I really like and I'm interested to see when I pull it out of this bag how bad it actually is. Ooh, I can see it. So the reason I haven't really worked on it, I'll show you what it is first. It's a dimensions kit, a really old one called French Flower Shop. And I adore this piece. I think it is gorgeous. When I got it, it was partially started. And I will show you, I still have the partially started bit. And by partially started, I mean it's pretty far along, really. I think this is the top. So this is what the lady had gotten done. If you can see, she gridded with pencil. And that pencil isn't coming out. 
is not coming out. It's been in there way too long. It's not coming out. So I decided that I ne I was going to restart it. And I looked at the colors and I tried to make sure that I think that I'm going to have enough of each of the threads. And I think I will. There's only a couple that I don't think um, I had enough of. So I went and bought some DMC that I matched up as best as I could to try to fill in the gaps when I get there. But the fabric that I ordered to put this on... This is what it looks like. And can you see? You can see my quilt. You can even tell it's a house probably through this fabric. It is extremely loose weave. So the issue that I had with it and why I haven't really worked on it since last year is that this design, I don't know if you can tell, but this is just intermittent stitching the background is just the color of the fabric so I got really really worried about being able to see the stitch it like see the carryover because not only is it intermittent stitching which you can't even really see the stitching there we go you can kind of see it there but um it's intermittent stitching and it's half stitches, so you can't even, like, hide it very well. I don't know. I got very worried about it last year when I was stitching in Stitch Mania, but I think maybe now that I've stitched a little bit more, I'm a little more experienced, I might be able to make it work. But if not, I might decide this year to scrap it and try to get a different piece of fabric because this stuff is just so 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 see-through so light it's unfortunate because I like the color a lot and this is the bag that I have it in and this is one of my favorite fabrics that I have used for a project bag it's got this little green button and the inside fabric I just adore and I think it fits the French flower shop moving on on the 11th it's another carryover from last year I'll show you the project bag off the bat it is I like this little accent flap I really like this fabric here and the inside I have just these were scrap fabrics that I had and it is Java block party again I have a bag within a bag for this one again I don't know why it it just it just is Java block party by hands on design it's so cute isn't it um, and with the, her new block parties that she brought out in Nashville, the Meow and Wolf, I still adore the Meow block party. And I'm not a cat person, but it is just the cutest thing. So I might still have to get it. Beside the point, this is another Stitch 9. And it's another one that I haven't touched, have not touched since last year when I got this tiny corner done haven't even really thought about it other than deciding that I wanted to finish it this year so I put it in stitch nine so are you guys tired yet because I'm getting a little tired actually I'm not I could talk about cross stitch all day but what are you gonna do the 12th the 12th of May last year, I started or kept working on sewing vintage, which I showed you last time I finished. I'll just show you again here. Just a refresher in case you didn't see my last video. Sewing vintage by Bobby G Designs. Which, by the way, I am putting this into Ginger Gerald's large project uh, competition. The rule is it has to be 100 by 100. This is exactly 100 by 100. It feels kind of like cheating, but I'm going to put it in there anyways. 
I already sent him the the entry. Ugh. I'm also considering putting the Japanese garden, the mm, you know which one I'm talking about that I already showed you. Considering putting that one in there because it's definitely 100 by 100 even though it's not all stitched all over the place. That also feels like cheating. Let me know if you think it's cheating. It's definitely way bigger than 100 by 100. It's a lot of stitches. Let me know what you think. Uh, let's see. So the 12th is Mother's Day. So I thought it would be really fitting to start Mother's Tree by Lavender and Lace. I've talked about this before and how I wanted to do it. I have a grandma who's super into genealogy and she is my grandma on my mom's side. I asked her to trace her maternal line for as far back as she could and she got back to my grandma times 12 or my great times 12 grandma um, in the 1600s. <sighs> going to annoy me. Oh, I was just looking for my phone so that I could look it up. I'm recording on my phone. Derp. Anyways, I will. My great times 12 grandma. It's going to be huge and I want to get it done for her. And you know, she's getting, she's getting older. So if I ever want to finish it for her so that she can enjoy it for years and years, I really need to get on this. So I'm starting it on May 12th, which is Mother's Day, which I think is fitting. All right, and the 13th, 14th, and 15th are all continuations from last year that I haven't touched since last year. So let's get going. The first one is another Mill Hill kit. This is the one that I can't remember if it's this or the other that's in my stitch nine, but this is Winter Woods. I'm pretty sure it's the other one, Winter Wonderland. Just look at that little cardinal sitting in those trees. It's going to be so cute. It's going to be so cute. Except right now, this is all it is. Just a little tiny corner that I only worked on for one day being last May. This is why I need to limit myself to 15 projects because I need to stitch on all my projects more often than I do. All right, next up, May 14th. We're almost there, guys, almost there. Uh, this is Delft Blue China. It's a Janlin kit. And I'm not doing it on the Ada, I'm doing it on linen. But this is what it looks like. And again, it's an older looking design. But I love it. I like blue and yellow together. And I like to delve China. I just do. So I'm going to stitch it. And I think it's super pretty and I can't wait to get it done. It's going to take forever though because this is where I am little line across the top from last year. I think I need to do something like stitch nine every year so that I focus on getting things done. But then again, if I limit myself to 15 projects per year, I mean, potentially I would get more things done because I only have 15, right? That's what I'll tell myself. The blue and yellow, I like it a lot. That's why I made this project bag with the blue and the yellow. Because I like it and it fits with the Delft Blue China. And then another blue and yellow to finish off Stitch Mania. May 15th, I have this vintage blue lace. Wait, what did I just say? Vintage blue vase, which is a plaid Vucilla kit. Kind of similar feeling to the last one. In another bag within a bag. Come on, guys. I gotta fix that. When I'm going through this this year, I need to fix it. And apparently, this is all I got done. If I unfold it here, you'll see. That is it. Just a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow. So. 
There we go. Whew. Stitch Mania. That's my plans. Yay. I think I should be able to stick with it. I did it last year. I stuck with it just fine. And I've got it all out now. Another thing that this video forced me to do was actually get ready for Stitch Mania, which is good because it's only a couple weeks away now. All right. I had a couple of other things that I want to talk to you about, but it's way too long of a video. So instead, I'm just going to leave you with a little bit of a shop update for my Etsy shop, um, which I realize doesn't have very much in it, but I am going to share with you anyways because I want to. Um, if you don't want to hear about it, that's fine. You don't have to stick around and listen. Uh, I will see you again soon, hopefully. I hope you decide to stop back and see me again. And I appreciate you listening to my huge ramblings about everything. Uh, okay, so I have added Grime Guards to my Etsy shop. And I'm slowly working on, on getting them. So uh, I, I showed you my bags already. This is my garden bag that's in my cross stitch shop. It's a large project bag, comes with a zipper pull. On the inside, there's a pocket for highlighters and scissors and whatever else you need. Uh, nice zipper bag. It fits an 11 by 11 Q-snap just fine with plenty of room. So I've made coordinating grime guards for it. So, I'm going to be doing that with all my bags. I'm going to have ba project bags and grime guards that match. So if you want to get a matching grime guard, have a super coordinating project, that'd be great. Or if you just want grime guards, I'm obviously going to have way more grime guards than I am going to have bags available. So if you just like the grime guard, if you like the fabric, uh, you can do that. What I'm going to do for the grime guards, I'm doing 8x8, eight by eight, 11 by 8 11 by 11 and 11 by 17 sized grime guards. The 8 by 8 and 11 by 11 are small enough that I can get one with the fabric gives me one grime guard. I've worked out how to most optimize the fabric usage to get the maximum amount of grime guards in the, I think, what's going to be the right proportions. So just trust me when I say this is going to be the best way to make them. Anyways, so the 8x8 and the 8x11 are going to be one solid color. I'm going to have essentially two colorways for each bag. One is going to be the A colorway, which is going to be the primary outside of the bag fabric as the main, main thing. And then the B colorway is going to be the lining fabric is going to be the main thing. So... I have 8x8, eight eight. this will be an 8x8 eight eight Q-snap, this will be an A colorway, so it's got the outside fabric, the primary fabric is all that it is. Okay, I will also have 8x8 eight eight and 11x11 11 11 of the B colorway, which is just the lining fabric, and that's it. So this will be an 8x11, the B colorway. This really isn't that confusing, I might be making it sound more confusing than it is. Pretty much I have two different styles of each grime guard of different sizes. Okay, then the 11 by 11 and the 11 by 17, I have an accent fabric on the grime guard. So this would be an A colorway because it's primarily the outside main fabric with an accent of the lining. And here's a B colorway of an 11 by 17 where it is primarily the lining fabric with an accent of the exterior fabric for the project bags. All this goes to say you can either way obviously it it goes with the project bag whether it has the accent of the lining or the accent of the main. Again you don't have to get a bag you just get a grind bag. That would work too. So I finished these ones last night late so I'm gonna work while I'm uploading this video I'm gonna work on getting all these photographs and put into the shop I also have already posted uh, my llama grime guards so similar 
I do with some of them are more lining, some of them are more exterior fabric. Um, but this is an 11 by 11 of the primary colorway. And again, here's that bag. It's the same thing. It comes with a zipper hole and lining with the pocket. Sometime I might try to make different size project bags, but for now I'm just going to make it easy for myself and put just the large ones that fit 11 by 11 key snaps. And I'll see what, if I get any demand for any other ones, then I'll make them. But for now, I'm just enjoying making the large project bags and the gram guards. Yay! So that's my shop update. That's all I have to tell you about that. If you're interested, I, I will put the link to my Etsy shop down below. Um, and that is all I've got for you. And this is way too long of a video. So <laughs> I hope to see you guys again soon and have a fun stitch mania. I'm super excited for it. And I can't wait to see what you all are doing too. Um, if you want to comment below and tell me what you're doing, I love hearing about people's plans. So go ahead and, uh, comment. Let me know what you're doing. Um, and I will talk to you again soon. Hopefully, I'll give you an update part, part way through Stitch Mania. All right. I uh, hope you guys all have a good day, good night, good whatever. And I will see you soon. Love you. Bye.